Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with this Thursday expert and friend of the channel, Mr. Jonathan Twomley. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing really well today, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well. So I don't know if you saw it yesterday. I think uh, I think yesterday will prove to be a very seminal moment in the crypto area. I know neither of us are really fans of the crypto space as an investing thesis. I do have 1% of my net worth in it, uh, but that was bought a long time ago and it just sits there as an insurance policy. Uh, but what, why, the reason I wanted to bring this up is I think there is a bank run going on in crypto, much the same way that a money market account broke the buck. What was that? 12 years ago? During I think what, crisis, yeah. yeah, during the financial crisis. Now the m m money market account is, I remember it kind of bottomed down at 97 cents, something like that might've been 95, but again, something that we thought would never happen happened. And that was a big moment. That was kind of like peak fear, as I recall, in the great financial crisis. Not that it got better. It was just kind of peak fear because people were like, run to the exits. And I think that happened yesterday in crypto. Again, I don't pretend to know stable coins or even care, but I do know that something that was supposed to be worth a dollar is no longer worth a dollar. And a lot of people are running to the exits. A lot of people lost something like half a, half a trillion dollars or 50 billion or some big number evaporated in 24 hours. The reason why I want to bring this up is not to bash crypto, not to bash stable coins, but the seminal moment of peak fear. I think, I think crypto will have a nuclear winter and there will be people that don't go back ever. Uh, so let's talk about peak fear, bank runs, why they happen, what happens after. Yeah, I mean, well, listen, let's put, to put in crypto in context. Uh, si since it hit its most recent peak about six months ago, mm -hmm. It is down 56%. Yeah. Right. So you have lost more. If you bought into the hype at the top, right, you have lost more than half your money since then. If you mm -hmm. did not get out, right? Mm -hmm. You're still hold, you're still holding <laughs> your, your your Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that has already created an atmosphere of fear, right? That inexorable downward trend how low is it going to go mm -hmm. that's the kind of sort of background yes that is really uh not helpful but i mean it helps to create then you know a, a when when then you have a an event where some assumption that everybody thought was true and could not be challenged right turns out not to be true then all hell breaks loose, right? And that's when you have, you know, so the same thing with the money market mm -hmm. breaking the, the buck, which was supposed to never happen. And yeah. I can't pretend to explain the money market. Like I have no, I, I mean, years ago, I kind of understood what was going on. I've totally forgotten about it because I haven't thought about it since then. But the idea of like money markets is just like a super, super safe kind of, uh -huh almost like a savings account sort of investment. We just got a little bit better interest rate mm -hmm. than like a net regular bank savings. It wasn't like super, but it was like a few basis points better. And, lots mm -hmm. of people, and you had to lock up your money, right? For like six months or whatever. I whatever, assume, yeah. It was like a CD. And then, but the idea was that this is like super, super safe. It's paid yep. the same thing, can't possibly. And then all of a sudden, you know, when all hell was breaking loose in the financial crisis and suddenly they're like, wait a minute, money markets may actually Lose. Maybe they're not risk free. Yeah, because I, I again, I think you're I think you're remembering exactly right. And I think it's very similar to what's happening in the crypto space with the whole uh, stable coin is there was a whole bunch of stuff breaking in the Great Recession. There were companies going bust. Stocks were trading lower, but we still had faith in the money market account. In fact, people were getting out of stocks, putting it in the money market accounts just to have a safe place to go while the turmoil happened. Yeah, and then while they figured it out. Money. Yes. Yeah, they their money so that then when it was at the bottom, they could jump back into the exactly. stock. Exactly. And then even that proved to be not safe. Now, again, it wasn't, again, if you, if, if you lost three or 4% when you didn't expect it, that hurts. It wasn't like these stable coins that are now worth zero or nearly zero. So, uh, but it did, it caused, that was a sign to me of peak fear. Yeah. And, and again, as somebody who was in the real estate game at that time, what happened after peak fear, it's really weird. As I remember it, again, sometimes history is fuzzy. As I remember peak fear, and it was like 
like 90 days or four months, people literally did nothing. They're like cash in the bank, like under a mattress, under a mattress, under a mattress. Then at some point we get maybe six months later and people start to look up. People were still burned by money markets, but that's where all of my private investors came from, right? Because now they were getting a first deed of trust on an asset that they could see the appraisal. They see the value. I borrowed three, four, five million bucks, like six or nine months after the mm. money market, because A, they were getting 10%, not 1%. B, they had a recorded. Basically, real estate is always something you can touch. They could see it. Right. They could walk through it. They could see the value add. So it was really interesting. Peak fear, under a mattress, and then people look up like, right. you know, so was, that's how I, I remember it. I, I think, frankly, that, and I mean, if anybody has been following me, they know that I'm not a fan of crypto. So, if, so take what I say with a grain of salt. But um, I, I, I think that, so crypto has been based on a lot of, let's call it enthusiasm for a new thing, a new technology, sure. right? And there are some attractive aspects to it. I mean, the one, the one that I think attractive, frankly, and this is really the only one I can think of that's attractive is, is the portability of your money mm -hmm. via crypto, right? So let's just say you're someone who thinks like, you know what, I need to have an escape plan. And for the worst case scenario, I'm going to put some money into crypto so I can carry it with me. You saw people doing this in Russia, right? Absolutely. Leave Russia. They're like, they couldn't get their money out because of currency controls. They're like, I'm out of here. And they stuck their money into crypto mm -hmm. so that then they could take it out of crypto. But that's the thing. It wasn't to put it into crypto to like save it. It was it's portability, it's like, yeah. It's like you put rubles into crypto now. Crypto is better than rubles because rubles were tanking. Mm -hmm. Then when you get into Poland, you can convert it into euros. Right? Yeah. And it could be, you don't want to leave it in crypto, right? You want to you wanna, you wanna use it as a, a medium of exchange and it's better sure. than, and, you know, and also maybe you're going to get a better exchange rate or whatever. Like that made sense to me. The problem is the way that I, that's the only case I can see for it. Mm -hmm. And, and the problem is you have a lot of risk, even for those couple of days, as now we know, mm -hmm. you could have your money in crypto for a day and you can lose a substantial amount of it. Right. Yeah, Unlike yeah. pretty much any, I can't think of another, uh, you know, thing that you can put your money into where you can lose it that fast not even stocks right no so, not, not generally speaking and yeah. and so like it's highly volatile and it's become and the volatility is a result of the fact that it is based essentially on like hope for the thing as a thing right like yeah, like enthusiasm I, I, about enthusiasm about the theory is what drives the value and the problem with that as mm -hmm. any kind of the problem with that as an investable thing mm -hmm. is that it is highly subject to everybody's fears and, and enthusiasm, right? Because that's basically yeah. all it is. That's like that's the market, it's sentiment. There is no there's no Absolutely. like cash flow to tie it to. It and as we've seen over the last couple of years, I mean, I was kind of like thinking for a while that maybe I was going to be wrong about crypto, mm -hmm. even though I hate it, because it sort of was doing what people said. However, now we know, you know, they were always, oh, it's digital gold. Well, gold is an inflation hedge. Mm -hmm. we've, had, we've had the top, highest inflation in 40 years. And what's happening to crypto? It's tanking, right? Mm -hmm. Not an inflation hedge, thank you very yeah. much. Uh, because unlike real estate, which we'll talk mm -hmm. about later, mm -hmm. the value of crypto is not tied to the economy. It's not tied to anything. It's, so it, yes, unlike it's real estate, real estate, you have, if you have inflation, you have rising rents, then your value goes up. That's an inflation hedge. Mm -hmm. Gold is an inflation hedge because gold has had value for thousands and thousands of years. People think it's safe. Mm -hmm. Crypto, it's like, we don't know what this is. They tell us it's digital gold, but I'm not going to wait around to find out. And if I see yeah. those guys selling, I'm out of here, right? And that's yeah. it was highly subject to, to like runs yeah. down, right? So, and now yeah, what we're seeing is the confidence. People, there was an inherent lack of confidence in the asset all along. There was just a lot of enthusiasm, but there wasn't confidence. Yeah, it was like, you know, my confidence is 2% better than my fear. So, but now it's yeah. gone the other way and people are like. It was, it was all based on hope, not on confidence. And so once the confidence is, once the hope starts to deteriorate, there's no 
confidence to back it up, right? So unlike gold, right? Where yeah, gold there's certainly less, but this is where, so this is what's going to happen. Again, I think what we're going to see in the crypto market is just like the money market account, it's kind of peak fear. It's still happening. There's another stable coin called Tether. It's the largest out there. It broke the buck today. Uh, I think it was 96 cents or whatever. Maybe it comes back. Maybe it doesn't. Don't care. That's not what this video is about. It is about confidence. And kind of, as you said, there was always this momentum. It was, Hey, it went up. Look at that guy. I'm going to put a little there. Then it, 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 it worked and it worked and it attracted more and more folks. Once you have peak fear, all of the weak hands or soft hands or whatever you want to call it are going to leave. You're going to see just like the dot-com era, large percentage of coins are going to go poof back to zero. And just like the dot-com era, there will be three or four winners. I think there, you know, Bitcoin being the largest, Ethereum being one, there will, there will be some winners, right? There are enough people that are true believers that they will always have some value, right? I don't think those coins go to zero, in my opinion, who knows? Right. Uh, but I think most do, many yeah. do. But I think it also really, I mean, I, I don't know enough about this, but I mean, sort of how, how many people got in and when they got in, right? Because I think- Well, 40% the, of them, a Bitcoin, the biggest one are underwater, according to an article from like the weekend. So it's probably like 45% now. So for people, if you've got that much of the market that's underwater, it's only a matter of time before people start cutting losses, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, because they will- you know, it's one thing for all the people who bought Bitcoin at five cents a coin, they're still way up, right? Mm -hmm. but, even, but some of those, and what will happen with those people is some of those people will cash out because, mm -hmm. well, they're, they're like, I got to cash some, but they're going to they're gonna leave some in Bitcoin oh, because of course. they're still in the money and like they're hoping it's going to go back up. But for those people who bought at the top, right? And basically, if you bought at any time in the last probably a year. Oh, a year you, now, yes. An hour to walk. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and those people will only wait so long before they just, you know, cut their losses, mm -hmm. right. Take their lumps and get, get back. And the, and the fear will grow that exactly. like, this is going to go, like, I'm going to lose more. And that mm -hmm. was that. And then frankly, that's what drives the market down as more people sell. Yep. Right. So, uh, it, what'll be interesting to see is, if people can't sell, I mean, I don't know like how liquid the market is, right? Because the market, there may be, you know, maybe it may reach the point where there's actually a, very few takers mm -hmm. for Bitcoin because people think it's going to continue to go down. The trans, the price will be based on the transactions that exist, but there right. may be very few transactions. And the reality may be that people can't sell their coins and they can't get out. Yeah. Right? So I, again, I don't think that's going to happen to the biggest ones and we don't need to kind of go there. But there will be there will be many that go to zero and they should. They were always frauds. They were always pump and dumps. They were always rug pulls. There will be some true innovation in this space going forward. Uh, I don't think crypto as a investable area goes to zero, uh, but there will be a hell of a lot less of them. You're going to have a nuclear winner because so many people will be burned and never come back. And just like just I mean, I once I got burned and once I lost 80 percent of my stack, I didn't come back for 15 years. Yeah. It's just a big old scar that's never coming back. So again, it's going to be a long road to hoe, uh, in my opinion. Again, a bank run is scary. Uh, it is when consumer confidence breaks. It is completely fear, and it just builds on itself and builds on itself. And it's... Uh, and, and listen, the difference between, say, like a bank run or a run on the dollar or is that there are massive institutions who have interest in, in bucking up Mm -hmm. the dollar or the yep. banks, right? The government will step in. It'll declare bank holidays. It'll, yeah, absolutely. It'll, it'll impose, uh, you know, it'll, it'll provide insurance for, for regular depositors. Absolutely. It'll do things like, you know, the central bank will intervene to, to buy dollars and, and buck up the price of the dollar. But mm -hmm. this is kind of live by the sword, die by the sword cryptocurrency, right? Not happening. This is the unregulated free market libertarian. We don't need government. We're going to show them that this is, you know, Better way, money, yeah. blah, yeah. blah, 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 right? But the, the downside of that is nobody's coming to save you. Exactly. Right? So, mm -hmm. um, and there is no bottom, really. I mean, for some of these coins. And frankly, I think even Bitcoin, you're right. I mean, I, I also agree that Bitcoin will have some value and it mm -hmm. won't go away. Won't go but away. But what's the value? Don't like, know. Like, <laughs> is the value like $1 per coin? I think that may be a defensible value for Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. But who knows? Because 
like because of the transportability issue maybe and maybe mm-hmm. well you pay a little premium because you can now take your dollars overseas and flee if you need to mm-hmm. so maybe maybe that makes it worth a dollar's five right so it's it's like because that's worth something right sure. but it's not it, i just i just still cannot that's okay this is not about getting jonathan to like or unlike bitcoin this yes. is about the fact that bank runs happen they are very scary yes uh they build on themselves we've had them in stocks we've had them in banks crypto is having its moment right now it is going to be bad it is very scary and lots of people are going to get hurt it's just uh it's part of the process the good news is at least as somebody look on the outside it typically means peak fear is right around the corner so uh, Jonathan, where can people find you? And, and- oh, I just want to make one more point, sure. though. So what's interesting, though, know, is that the money that's coming out of Bitcoin now has to go somewhere. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So where is it going to go? It's not going into the stock market because the stock market is also not doing great. Yeah. So it's going to either go into cash, which we're going to wait and see, either buy, buy more Bitcoins when the price gets to a certain point or, or yeah. buy stocks or buy something else. It's going, to go some, it's going to go somewhere, though. That's kind of like what the interesting thing is. And I think a lot of it, frankly is going uh, to real estate. Yeah, I think that's exactly kind of my point. I think a lot of it will go to cash as people lick their wounds and kind of go, what the hell happened? How can I be such a fool? It's what everybody did last time. And then at some point they look up and go, what's real? Ah, real estate. Yeah. Well, listen, if you you, uh, are persuaded by Robert Schiller's book, Irrational Exuberance, Mm, you know that well, where did the money go after when the stock market crashed? Exactly. It all went into real estate, right? Mm-hmm. And then blew that bubble off, right? Yeah. So uh, it's just, you know, the money does go somewhere. So. Yep. Very all cool. Right. Jonathan, where can, uh, what's your Facebook group? It's an amazing place to be. It is called Multifamily Investment Community. And uh, you can just swing by there and ask to join and I will let you in. I also want to let people know that I, I have uh, an active deal going on right now. Mm-hmm. So if you are an accredited investor, this is a 506C offering. It is a portfolio in Mesa, Arizona. Very, very Ooh. hot market. Rent growth is off the charts. Yeah. Uh, even during our due diligence period, rents have gone up substantially on this property. Wow. Uh, if you are interested in this uh, investment, please Google Two Bridges Asset Management uh, and I will uh, and, and fill out the form and you'll get on the list and you can learn about the investment. But again, you must be, you must be accredited uh, and there's a fairly short time horizon on this. So uh, very cool. Join if you want. Yeah. Thank you, Jonathan.